known only as it. The following is a true story, including the count of, first, my friend will refer to as Caskey, and my own. We were in basic training for the Navy, nearing the end of our stay there and moving on to the fleet soon enough. As you can imagine, people never really get close and basic. So close. People get really close and basic, so close, that one night, my friend Caskey decided to share his encounter with something that he never gave a name to. Me. Me, Caskey, and two others sat around our bunks after lights out, each of us sharing spooky stories that we'd heard, joking along the way. Caskey remained silent the entire time, seemingly conflicted. He eventually worked up to telling us about his home in Indiana, and a few minor scares he swore were true. We quickly moved back to our stories when he had stopped speaking, but he seemed still distant. We badgered him for a while until he cave, finally caved in and spoke of it. He said he never gave the entity a name, believing by attaching a name to it it would give power over him, and it would return if he would speak a name for it. As crazy as it sounded to me at the time, it seems he had some grounds on what he said, but we'll get to that on get on to that later. Caskey was only eight at the time of the incident, living in a very old two story house. He'd had a few minor paranormal encounters in the house already, but none had left a lasting impression on him. Not like it did. Even as he spoke of it he grew pale, his eyes darting from side to side. Weary, lust to come back to finish what had started over 15 years ago. As I said, he was 8 at the time, and he recalled that it was 2.37 in the morning, a time that he will never forget. He woke up, feeling the need to utilize the bathroom just down the hall. He rose from his bed, tiptoeing on the wooden floors en route to the bathroom, when he heard something from the stairs, which lied just past the bathroom. It moved slowly, and sounded as if it were on all, all fours, but Caskey didn't have a dog. He froze in fear, unable to make a break for the bathroom or return to his room, so he stood silently as the sound of paws echoed up the stairs. It eventually reached the top, and when what Caskey faced brought sweat to his brow and sent shivers, shivers down his spine to this day. He described it as having the body of a dog, a very large, hairless dog standing about three and a half feet tall on all fours. Its head was not the head of a dog. Rather, it was it had somewhat human appearance, but it was flipped upside down and had the teeth of an anglerfish. Its eyes were two black pits, which seemed to choke out surrounding light, but there was a faint shimmer in the middle of each, as if looking into a long tunnel. Its nose were mere slits, and its nails seemed more like talons, scratching the hardwood as it walked. He and it stared at each other only for a moment before Caskey, Caskey turned and ran to his room, slamming the door shut and hiding under the bed, but didn't give up so easily. The sound of the door creaking open was the only sight Caskey received that the beast had followed him. He slowly peeked out from under his covers, only to find it sitting on the edge of his bed, peering at him with its pitch black eyes. Suddenly, it jumped up, grabbing the boy by its foot and dragging him into the middle of the room, slinging him about before Cassie, Cassie blacked out. He woke up the next morning, deep bite marks marking his legs, covered in scratches and bruises. He told his mother, but she, but she thought he had been attacked by some dog the previous day, or another child that beat him up. Regardless, he never spoke of it again, except to us, of course. We sat in silence for a moment before deciding we were all tired and went to sleep. And that should have been the end of it, but it wasn't. I decided to send my friend Kasky a message over social networking site, mentioning it not by its nameless identity, but I, by a name I conjured for it. He told me to never speak of it again, and immediately blocked me so I couldn't question him further. Further. Or he didn't have the same names, or he didn't have to have the same names stuck in his head. For after this happened, it came for me. It started slowly at first, shadows in the dark roaming the house, as it may have done with Caskey, without him realizing it, but I did. I left the next week after hearing it scratch on my door. I had locked to prevent which I had locked to prevent its entering. 
I drove roughly 300 miles to see my girlfriend for, the, for a while, staying in a nearby hotel. I thought I was safe here, thought the distance would have made some sort of difference, but one night, by chance, I looked at the hotel window, greeted by it. No, I wasn't right in the window, but I was up three stories and had a clear view of my car, and the three and a half foot tall dog's shadow circling it, scratching at the car door. I watched it for a while, frozen with fear, and then moved away from the window lest it saw me and knew my location. I would have written it off as a small dog, except it kept coming back, circling my car night after night. After I returned home, I immediately moved out of my house and into an apartment, thinking that it may have be thrown off by the smell of other people, and that's why it goes for the sense on, on the car rather than me. So far, it's worked. I haven't had the beast in my living area since, but every night, when almost nobody's awake, it returns to my vehicle, scratching, searching for me, and I fear one day it will follow my scent up to the fourth floor into my apartment and visit the man who gave it power over himself with something as simple as a name.